Good morning, and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I am Worship Associate Judy Amir, and I'm joined in worship leadership by our former minister, the Reverend Kathy Hurt. Our musicians this morning is Teresa DeGroen and our cantor, Kay Riddinger. We also have technical support from Jane O'Neill and greeter, Dorica DeGraff. BUC is a Unitarian Universalist congregation in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Even in our virtual format, we are a thriving community with a place for everyone. All people of goodwill are welcome here. Social justice is an essential component of our lives. We are a capital W welcoming congregation and a green sanctuary congregation. Our social justice work this year is focused on civic engagement, racial equality, economic equality, and environmental action. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and later posted on Facebook. After the service, we invite you to stay for a virtual coffee hour. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, we extend a special welcome to you. We hope that you'll stay after the service and get to know us. We have one announcement this morning. Please join Keith Ensroth this Tuesday, June 1st at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live for our monthly Vesper service. This is a joyful yet introspective evening service that centers gratitude for the day that has passed and welcomes the night that is beginning. The service will include the lighting of memorial candles, candles of concern, and candles of hope and joy. Names and information for candle lighting can be submitted on our website under worship links or shared in comments on the Facebook Live video. To view the service live, visit the Birmingham Unitarian Church Facebook page at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, June the 1st. The video will also remain on Facebook for later viewing. Thank you for joining us this morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together. And now our service begins.
in honor of those we have known and loved in the past, in recognition of the gifts and sacrifices they have made on our behalf, and in our sincere hope that we may be worthy of their memory, we light our candle, we give our thanks, and we offer our prayers. Abide with me, faithful even guide. The darkness deepens, still with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with to its gossips of life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changes not, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to grasp. Here's where to wait and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grieve thy victory? I triumph still if thou the mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. The weekly offering serves as an ongoing reminder of this mission. Sharing in this weekly practice of generosity also strengthens the bonds between congregants and our high purpose. So let there be an offering in support of this beloved community and our good works. Contributions can be made through our website, Venmo, username at BUCMI, or a check in the mail. However you choose to give, please do so with a heart of gratitude for each other. Each Sunday in our worship service, we lift up the joys and sorrows of our lives, those experiences that we celebrate, those experiences that we struggle with. And we bring those experiences alike into this sacred time as a way of reflecting on the meaning they offer our lives, however wonderful, however often difficult. Each week you're invited to submit joys and sorrows that you'd like read in the Sunday service. Here are the ones we've received, the reflection, meditation, and prayer.
words by Kathleen McTeague. They are with us still. In the struggles we choose for ourselves, in the ways we move forward in our lives and bring our world forward with us, it is right to remember the names of those who gave us strength in this choice of living. It is right to name the power of hard lives well lived. We share a history with those lives. We belong to the same motion. They too were strengthened by what had gone before. They too were drawn on by the vision of what might come to be. Those who have lived before us, who struggled for justice and suffered injustice before us have not melted into the dust and have not disappeared. They are still with us. The lives they lived hold us steady. Their words remind us and call us back to ourselves. Their courage and love evoke our own. We the living carry them with us. We are their voices, their hands and their hearts. We take them with us, and with them, we choose the deeper path of living. Before I begin the homily this morning, I want to acknowledge how delighted it is for me to see your faces again. Uh, I've missed you. You're in my thoughts every day. I also, also want to thank Reverend Mandy for the invitation to be with you on a Sunday while she's on leave. I've looked forward to this so much ever since she extended that invitation. And that my first Sunday to be with you again should be this particular Sunday, Memorial Day Sunday, when we remember those we've lost in the preceding year is especially meaningful. Besides my chance to reconnect with you, to remember with you, this is a time in our culture when the question of reconnecting and remembering is central for all of us. This time of emerging hesitantly with no sure way forward from the long disconnection of the pandemic. The desire to not remember the past year or more is strong on all sides. And that is an energy which has always been present around Memorial Day, the desire to rush ahead into summertime, to be heedless, carefree. And yet there's Memorial Day, challenging us to pause, to remember. And for this congregation, Memorial Day Sunday comes with a tradition of stopping to remember those among you who've died reconnecting and remembering, ways of being that are more important than ever and more at risk than ever of being swept aside. A Filipino proverb observes that those who don't know how to look back to where they've been cannot reach their destination. While our culture ever and always urges us to look ahead, to plan ahead, to keep our attention focused on what lies ahead, the proverb attests to the need for us to be able to look back if we're to have any hopes of reaching whatever is ahead. And a key element in looking back where we've been is looking back at those who were part of our lives but have left us, relationships that we once had with people who are no longer with us. Memorial Day points us towards where we've been by inviting us to recall the people we've left behind. As a minister, I realized early on that my profession was going to involve lots of leaving people, lots of leaving places, leaving all that behind me as I moved about from church to church. I concluded early on that the best way to proceed with all that moving around 
would be to completely leave behind me the congregation I was finished serving. The rules of my profession encourage such leaving behind, cutting off all that had gone before. Yet after a few times of this, I began to feel so disconnected, a person without a past, that as the proverb warns, I began to struggle with figuring out where I was going, discerning my destination. So intent had I become on not looking back, I was unable to clearly see the way forward. I had to rediscover just how to look back, not with longing to go back, but to look back without attachment. For that proverb includes a second part, which says, those who keep looking back cannot reach their destination. Look back, remember, then go forward. We are always saying farewell in this world, always standing at the edge of a loss, attempting to retrieve some human meaning from the silence, something which was precious and is gone. I frequently use these words of Adlai Stevenson to introduce memorial services. With a repetition of always, always saying farewell, always standing at the edge of a loss. The sentence transforms a particular experience into a universal, constant one. We say farewell, we feel a loss always, moment by moment throughout the course of our lives. Though we may prefer to believe that much of the time we hold on to who and what we love and perhaps believe that a loss is an interruption in an otherwise unbroken state of having and holding, the reality is the opposite, is what Stevenson describes. Constant farewells, continuous losing, forever taking leave. And just in case we still believed otherwise, the last several months with unimaginable numbers of deaths from the pandemic, in these months, the universe has presented us with the unavoidable reality of loss day after day. Too often, in order to stave off even more losses, we've not been able to grieve the losses with our customary rituals that give comfort and closure. So in many ways, this Memorial Day Sunday may be the first time we come to a day of remembering where we can do nothing but remember all we have lost, all those we've lost. Those who don't, do not know how to look back to where they have been cannot reach their destination. Those who keep looking back cannot reach their destination. If our destination is reaching a kind of peace and acceptance with our losses, then the challenge for us is finding a way to remember that neither avoids the past nor gets stuck in the past. Remembering is not a process that proceeds on its own, and memories are not static items that take up space in our mental bookshelves. They're a combination of fact and emotion, of accurate details and remembered details and imagined details, and they invite us to engage them, let them have a life within us that neither inspires us to reject them nor tempts, tempts us to cling to them. Much like the respect we give to one another in our present living relationships, a kind of respect is also given our memories. We acknowledge them for what they are. We honor their gifts. We recognize that we cannot remake them. We let them be, we let them go. 
death does not end a relationship. The same challenges that come in our interactions with each other today are there in our interactions with those we loved and lost in the past. And the same productive responses that make our present interaction satisfying will apply to our interactions with the past. This Memorial Day Sunday, as the culture rushes headlong into summer activities with an extra intensity after the restrictions we've lived under are being relaxed, may we pause this weekend from that rush to take time to remember and in so doing to remember. Recall those we've loved with our remembering and as we invite those memories, find ourselves being put back together with them, remembered. What is past restored to us in the present to be with us forever. We may be always saying farewell in this world. We have said farewell too much this past year, but we can be remembering, remembering always. Each year when this congregation gathers on this day, Memorial Day Sunday, we have a tradition of going out to the Memorial Glen to remember and honor those whose names have been inscribed on the cenotaphs this past year. Because of the pandemic, that particular tradition is still not possible. But we will use this day and this time to remember those names added to the cenotaphs as those we lost this past year. And also use this day and time to remember those who were part of our church and died without being memorialized in that way. Even further, this Sunday in our remembering, we include those who died the previous year, but could not be fully honored because of the restrictions of the pandemic last Memorial Day Sunday. To guide our remembering of all these we have loved and lost, your church staff have put together a video that reminds us of the Glen and then recalls the faces of those we honor today. We'll start our video now.
Now I'll read the names, both of those you saw in the video, as well as others we've lost whose photos were not included in the video. Joanne Wentworth, Timothy Lachowski, Robert Moore, Ed Brohard, Dorothy Pryor, Pat Kreidler, Carol Yamasaki, Timothy Lachowski, Peggy McCall, John Beating, Walter Johnson, Robert Mitchell, Paula Short, Brenda McDonald, and to Davis, Harm Cry, Paul Miller, Brad Williams, Bill Duffy, Sarah Johnson, Warren McCabe. All that these were has dissolved into eternity forever, but will not be forgotten for their memories are mingled with life itself forever. Amen. Is it more often to be than to be? Listen more often to things than to be. Is it ancestors' breath when the father's voice is heard? Is the ancestors' breath in the voice of the waters? Zala. Those who have died have never, never left. The dead are not under the earth. They are in the rustling trees. They are in the rolling woods. They are in the crying grass. They are in the morning rocks. The dead are not under the earth. So listen more often to things than to bees. Listen more often to things than to bees. Even ancestors.
his breast when the fire voice is heard is the answer's prayer in the voice of the waters those who have died have never never left the dead have a pact with the living they are in the woman's rest they are in the wailing child they are with us in our homes they are with us in this crowd the dead have a pact with the living And now may the peace which passes understanding, the peace which comes with acceptance and thanksgiving, the deep peace which reaches beyond our experience, may that peace abide in us all this day and forevermore. Shalom, salam, namaste, blessed be, amen.